Us. Hi guys. Today I'm going to be uh, talking about a few interesting things. First of all, I just want to start out. Look, I'm getting some wonderful, wonderful um, feedback from the Patreon family, and I got to thank you because I know you commit to that, and it's not necessary. Um, and it's the Patreon support that allows me to keep this going uh, over time as well as do other things. So I'm going to keep building my Patreon family. So if you know anyone you think enjoys what we do, by all means, get them to join Patreon. It's really appreciated. And uh, coming up now that the book's um, sorted, once the, the main rush settles down, I'll be focusing on uh, uh, more quality production as well as for the Patreon family as well. So thanks, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, the books, of course, Patreon, you, you got um, some real priority there. Um, Daniel, good to see you. It was good to catch up with you recently. Of course, and Gaza. Hey, man, hope you're going well. So look, at this stage, um, it's a really, really fulfilling time to see the feedback I'm getting about the book. But there is something really kind of funny that I want to do with you today. But other than that, let me talk about the trips. I went down to Wollongong. There's a fantastic dojo there. Did a nice seminar, about 70 people plus, 70 plus people from a whole range of organizations. Uh, hey, Tiberia, good to see you. And uh, then we, we did a couple of seminars. Um, uh, Peter Graham, the chief, came along. He's getting ready for his second down, which is exciting. Um, sold all the books I had, plus more, lots of orders. I'm getting some wonderful orders. I actually got an order the other day for 56 books from a dojo, so that's fantastic. Uh, the books are actually going really fast, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, then I went down to Melbourne, did a seminar at Sensei Kylie Baker's dojo, which is a wonderful dojo out at uh, Eltham. Um, it's the Eltham Musubi Dojo, nice name. Uh, and then we did a grading as well. But on the Saturday night, I went to Judd Reed's fight night, and it was a really great show. Some great energy, great fighters. But there's one thing I really, really loved, and that's there was a, a couple of kids, when I say kids, 15, 16-year-old, full of energy and full of strength and speed. And, and they did a format of fighting, which in the dojo, you may have, you may remember that I spoke about what I call the down. When we're doing kumite, doing normal kyokushin kumite, and then I'll yell out at random, down! And what that is, that's the signal then. You've got to close the gap, control each other on the inside, take each other to the ground, and then control on the ground. Okay, and it's a really good way to deal with that uh, bridging the gap challenge, which we have. Okay, in Kyogushin, there's no doubt about it. We have a challenge of how to close that gap, how to deal with the headshots and everything. But by doing this, it helps. And at Judd's tournament, it was an eight-man event, but a couple of the prelim fights, what they had was uh, some uh, demo fights where they had these kids with helmets on. So uh, they had helmets on to protect against the kicks. It was still Kyogushin rules in terms of no head strikes, so it's safety. Hey, Leon. I got your, uh, I got your order, Leon. Leon Lupi from uh, Brooklyn in New York, if I remember right. Got your order today, and I'll, I passed it on to the uh, distributor in LA today, so you shouldn't be too long. What's Paul? Good to see you, man. So anyway, these kids, the, the normal Kyogushin fighting, with the addition of a grab, and you can strike on the ground with a grab, makes it a little messy. But these kids were so sharp that it didn't look messy at all. Soulside said he got rid of grabbing because it was just a little messy. You know, you get guys just grab and punch. But the reality is for this stuff, like we were saying, you get a good grip. I wasn't saying I was doing it at the seminar in, uh, we were talking about it at the seminar in um, Wollongong. Good grip, good stiff arm, and it's really hard to deal with if you don't know how to deal with that. And, I mean, the grip can be a T-shirt, a leather jacket, a denim jacket, a doggy. It can be anything. But that stiff arm is so, so challenging. So, anyway, these kids do that. And then what they could do is they could take them to the ground. And one of the kids had really successful takedowns, which I was happy to say was one of the fundamental takedowns that I've worked on for Kyokushin guys. Not, I'm not saying he got it off me. 
by no, by no means. I would never suggest that. Um, but there are a range of simple takedowns for karate guys, bridge the gap, get in, work on the takedown, and you don't need uh, years of experience to make them work. Uh, so it was very, very successful. I really enjoyed that match. My buddy Paul Kale, who uh, uh, has a lot of grappling experience, was the ref referee, uh, and it was um, good to see him there and... I'm sure, I know, have no doubt, he was involved with Kudo for a while too, so I have no doubt he was quite influential. Uh, in fact, he probably came up with those rules. Um, they were really good rules. So that's something you think about too because I tell you there's one thing that when Itosu Sensei wrote his, what is now known as the Itosu Jukun or the, the Ten Precepts of Itosu, which I've done the uh, um, English translation for, uh, he, he pointed out, he says, look, you can do it for physical culture or you can do it for fighting, but you just have to be clear. My dad used to say, Cam, for crying out loud, if you sit, sit. If you stand, stand. Whatever you do, just don't wobble. Okay? So you, as an instructor, you choose what you, do, do, what you want your dojo to be. You know, is it a tournament fighting dojo? Is it a longevity in the martial arts for middle-aged people dojo? Uh, is it a health and fitness dojo? It, whatever it is, it's fine. Just don't try to convince yourself that it is all of them because it's really hard to be uh, to have them all. Um, so uh, when t uh, when uh, Itosu says that, make it, make a choice: physical culture or fighting. Hundred percent spot on. So you see at this tournament, there's some great tournament fighting. I've got to tell you. Um, if you want to be a tournament dojo, be a tournament dojo. It's fantastic. Just be prepared when you turn 40 or 50 to deal with your injuries if your tournament training isn't done in an optimal way. In other words, you know, it's an 80-20 rule. Train your heart out but leave 20% in reserve for the rest of your life because I couldn't tell you how many fighters there have been who um, – you know, for right or for, I'm not saying it's wrong by any means. Uh, in that, in in the tournament, if you're fighting to be a world champion, you're fighting to be a world champion. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but just be prepared for the consequences of what you do. Okay. Um, let me have a look at the notes. Oh, Rochelle, good to see you. Down for a million push-ups. You were late. <laughs> Hope all's well. Um, how are things? Yep, good to see you. Us. It was great pleasure to see you in person. Yes, indeed. Thank you for uh, the lift to the airport too. That was really, really wonderful. Okay, you want to order some books? Let me uh, get in touch with me later on, PM me later. Oh, Bill, good to see you all the way from America. Um, so the good news is the books have arrived in Australia. The books have arrived in New Zealand. They've arrived in UK. They've arrived in the USA. They've arrived as of yesterday in Holland, in Netherlands. So people in Netherlands, we can now look forward to getting your books out over the next couple of weeks. And Frederick, I think, is here. Um, Frederick, who's looking after uh, the books in Sweden. We are just waiting. We were talking about it yesterday, weren't remember, Frederick? We were just waiting to see news. But we know that the books have arrived in Germany, in Hanover, and they left Hanover yesterday for Sweden. So I guess it's just a matter of time. Um, it couldn't be too long. So Frederick, you see Frederick just left a message. Frederick's the distributor in Sweden and Scandinavia. So I, I'm thinking uh, that uh, we'll get a message from Frederick in the next day or two to say they've finally arrived in Sweden. That leaves Canada. And Canada, of course, was, well, for a start, it's a long way by um, by ship and then from Vancouver to the distributor Montreal, it's a it's a truck or a train across the nation. But Vancouver, remember they they postponed for a little while because of COVID. So Vancouver, India, uh, Canada is the last country to um, receive the books, which means it's just a matter of time. But so that's um, that's all good. And Marco, yeah, good, good call. We got through the Suez Canal. You remember we were talking about the Suez Canal a week or two ago. We got through the Suez Canal before uh, that ship got jammed. So we're lucky we got away. Otherwise, it would have been delayed even longer. Um, good news is the the orders are going through a second wave now. I had um, all the initial orders, which is really um, 
which is really, really great. And now I'm just getting inundated with more and more orders. And like I said, I'm getting big orders now. I got an order for 56, another one for 25, another one for 45. Um, the, the, uh, look, touch wood, I really think it's going to be a big hit, the book. Um, I'm really happy with it, and I'm getting some wonderful feedback from people. Speaking of books. <laughs> Gaza, the ship captain was reading the book, couldn't put it down. That's why. <laughs> yeah, good one, Gaz. Wouldn't that be a shame if it was true? <laughs> Funny, but a shame. Um, so, look, books. i got to tell you, look after your books because um, in Melbourne and uh, down south, so many people came up. I had one really nice guy, uh, Jason, came up in Melbourne, and he's a middle-aged man with a family now, but the, he said he showed me the first copy of the book. He said the first copy of the book was his book, the first book he read out of school in English. He's from another country, and he, he sat there with a dictionary. He used the book to, to study his English, and it became his Bible. He just read it over and over and over. So many stories like this, but unfortunately what happens is the books get damaged, okay? So I just I want to show you something. Roughly how many countries and continents around the world have you dispatched your book? A lot. I couldn't tell you. I'll think about it and see if I come back with another number. But now what we're doing is we're looking at a reprint, a special print run for South Africa and a special print run for India. So that's exciting too. But with books, let me just show you something here. This is my copy of Advanced Karate, as you can see. And... If I open up the page, you see at the very top, March 1974. Now, I've had that book for 45 years, but I always cover my books. I'm just going to show you something. This book's 45 years old, well-worn, and look at the condition that it's in. For no other reason than I always cover my books. But it's really important that you cover the book in a non-destructive way. Okay, I'm just going to recover this book for a sec. Now, this sounds corny. I know I'm not here to educate you about books, but yes, I am, because I'm going to actually show you how to cover a book. So that book's 45, 47 years old. Look at this. This is Dynamic Karate book cover, and this dates to August 1976. I picked this one up in Japan, and it's covered. And if I took the cover off that, you'd see how um, much the plastic... And this one too, World of the Ultimate. I've got a plastic cover on that. When did I get this? Soulside presented me with that. I'll, I'll just cover up that message there. From, but look at that. That's from Soulside. He, he did calligraphy in it. And it's um, this goes back to 1984. So that's 37 years old. And it's in really perfect condition. Cover your books. Okay, now having said that, look. What I have here is... A book and book plastic and I'm actually going to show you how to cover a book non-destructively <laughs> so um, I might even ask my wife Sakura to come and hold the, the, the camera she's so enthusiastic <laughs> she's got to go to work soon so what what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Sak to just just like that. So you see, I have the book and I have a roll of plastic. So the first thing you do is you just nip the plastic to the right length. You leave about three inches around it. Boom. Okay. Then what we do is this. You fold it in like so. Bear with me. I know you think you know all this and you probably do, but it doesn't hurt. You fold it in there. So now that's the first stage. We have the book folded. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it here. You see that? So I'm going to cut it at an angle like that. See that angle I'm cutting it at? Whoops, where are we? There. So I'm just going to cut it. If I had sharper scissors, it would be fantastic. So I cut it at that angle. Both ends. One. So you see how I've cut it there is at that angle. And then what I do is open it up. 
see like that, and I'm going to tuck that about there, yeah. I'm just going to tuck that little tongue inside the dust jacket. You see like that? It's a little awkward because I'm trying to hold it for the camera. I'm going to tuck that in there inside the dust jacket, both ends, and tuck it in here inside the dust jacket, like that. So that protects the edge of the book and the edge of the dust jacket. You see like that? That there. All right, then we tidy everything up. Who would have ever thought you'd come to a karate lesson and you get a book covering lesson? Okay, now the next thing you need is sticky tape. Now, because you're going to be um, manipulating and holding it, what I'd like to do is you, you get four pieces and I just cut them off and stick them on the edge of the table so you can grab them easily. Okay, so that's a two-hand job turned into a one-hand job. Then I come in here, make sure it's nice and even, and I'm going to fold one, two, and keep adjusting it so it's nice and tight. Now here's the trick. You don't ever put sticky tape on the book or the book cover. You only put the sticky tape from one piece of the plastic to another. And that way, anytime you could, if you really wanted to, or even if you wanted to sell it, you could remove the plastic. And you'll see, it's a little bit funky, but we'll work on that. So fold it over there, put the sticky tape on. That's the first corner. Then I come to the other corner, fold it over, tuck it and fold it as you go. So you keep adjusting it so it's nice and neat and tight. And look, that's, that's the first side done. Then you turn it over. You're saying to me, I learned this in primary school, but do you cover your books? I learned how to make my bed in primary school. I didn't start doing it until later. So there, adjust it. Keep adjusting it because it will, the plastic will. And the plastic will settle down over time too, of course. It'll stretch and it'll... It's as good. It's not just normal plastic. It's book covering plastic. You go to a book a, a bookshop, and there you have it. So I'll, my wife can get ready for work now. Thanks, honey, for doing that. So what you do? Yeah, it's like watching MacGyver, except I'm not making bombs. So there you have it. That's the book cover. Now that will protect the book for the rest of its life, and I hope that like that one I've had for 47 years. I hope when I've had this one for 47 years, I'll only be 109. But I hope, you see how easy that is? It's not perfect. It's kind of pulling at one end. You can adjust that. But please cover the book and it will last and last and last. There you have it. <laughs> Those little tips for tucking it around the edges. Yeah, no, that's a really, really, that's a good trick that you can do. You, you, you see how neat? You see how neat it is? It just tucks in underneath the dust jacket there. I used to, if you have a look at my early ones, I used to cut it off. See, like that? Cut it off. But this was happening. It would start to get a little bit dog-eared and ragged. So those corners were actually suffering. See here? It suffers. Oh, this one I've actually tucked in. So I must have started doing the tuck in at some stage. This one is tucked in, but you see it protects it. Look how good condition that edge is in as a result of um, tucking it in. See that that Japanese, that's um, a Jap that, that means salsa, it was a gift. So you see there, you tuck it in like that, really protects the book. But anyway, I think, um, I think uh, that's really, really a valuable tip. It's um, book cover plastic. Don't get uh, self-adhesive plastic, Rochelle. Get um, non-adhesive book cover plastic. So where is the plastic? So it's just not, it's not normal plastic. It's a little bit thicker. And the, what I like about it is when you fold it, it actually, see how by folding it there, it actually creases. So when you put it, it's hard to see, I know. But it, it takes a crease. So when you put it on the book, it actually... You fold it and over time it settles in and really 
taste of the book well. Um, so, uh, if you've got your book, I hope you're enjoying it. I'm getting great feedback. I had, uh, I've had a couple of people ring me at crazy hours. I don't even know who they are, and they're ringing me to just say how much they're enjoying it. Doug Swanborough, where's Doug? You still here, Doug? Just, woohoo! So there you go. Frederick from Sweden just said, just got the notification, so it should be before the end of the day. So we're, so there you go. Uh, Scandinavia, the books are arriving in Sweden um, either at the end of the day or tomorrow. That's great news. So Doug Swanborough there, see Doug? He, he got one of the very first books. I think it was the second book I delivered. Um, give me a sec. Can you get that sack? Thank you. Just got to quickly go and give some money to the uh, gardener. I'll get it, sack. So Doug, Doug trains, he's Kyrgyz in, but Doug trained with me years ago. He trained with me a couple of years back in Brisbane. Um, oh, Dave, you got your books? Yes, Dave, you got the other one? Um, Dave ordered, and sometimes what happens is the way I've got the layout, I miss that it's a multiple order. So I sent Dave one, he wrote back to me, he said, chill, buddy, I ordered more than one. What's going on here? <laughs> so I'm glad it arrived, Dave. Um, so Doug, I dropped Doug Swanborough's around at his house, hadn't seen him for ages. But it was like, I think, the second book that I delivered. Um, so I uh, hope you've been enjoying it, Doug. Uh, and um, Doug's instructor uh, got in touch and I went around to his dojo and did a little bit of a training session. And uh, yeah, I think it's really exciting. And uh, I took a box of books and sold all of them. So that was exciting. Um, I'm, I can't tell you how, uh, enough how much I'm really enjoying this, this whole thing. So it's really what I wanted to talk about uh, in relation to uh, the fight night on Saturday night. It was a good night. It's like a pro fight night but with Kyogushin rules and that the crowd appreciates it, good solid crowd. Uh, Judd's doing great stuff. Um, he's got a lot of support in Melbourne, which is fantastic. Um, Paddy Pinto, who um, uh, we get along here sometimes. I don't know if he's here today, but he had – three fighters in and uh, they were really great quality fighters as well. Um, but Jimmy Phillips, um, I had I fought Jimmy in the final of the Australians in 1980 and uh, cut a long story short, we went three full extensions and he got the decision. Um, and his son now, Nathan Phillips, is a great strong fighter. He's about six foot four, six foot five, and he won the event. Uh, if you are a tournament fighting dojo, fantastic. You knock yourself out. You train like a Trojan. Uh, you wake up the next day, deal with the injuries, and move on. Um, just remember that um, as you get older, the body ages, so you need something more than that. And Kyokushin, I just can't, you know, I, look, I'm so blessed that Mike Clark comes along because Mike Clark's been around in, in Okinawa and Goju forever, and he has such credibility, great books. Um, and I, I, I'm sure he has no problem with me pushing the Kyogushin barrel. I just love Kyogushin. I love everything about it. I was talking to a friend the other day about Kyogushin as a training modality uh, for people with trauma, PTSD, and so on. And the beautiful thing uh, that gives it that is the huge volume of bilateral repetition in the basics and the key eyes. Uh, and I think by adding the um, grappling component so you cover all five ranges. You see, you, you can't get stuck in one particular movement philosophy. Remember that the only thing that there's, in my mind, there's only one martial art, and that is the martial art of people. What determines a style and so on, other than the cultural variation, culture, time, all that, is the ranges that they focus on. So we know we've got the five ranges. And like I say, if you add a weapon, a handheld weapon, that's six. If you add a ballistic weapon, that's seven. 
and if you add intercontinental ballistic missiles, that's eight. And I reckon it won't be long before we start talking about um, uh, lasers from uh, satellites. But anyway, for, our, for all intents and purposes, five ranges. And everything is determined by which ranges your dojo focuses on. And if you focus on one single fighting philosophy, that's 100% okay. Just don't pretend to yourself that that covers all the movement philosophies. It doesn't, you know. You, you need, like so also I said, if you want to call yourself a martial artist, you have to be familiar with the fundamental principles of all martial arts. What he's saying is you have to be comfortable at least with the principles involved in managing all the five ranges. It's that simple. And so um, I think that's the, the lesson that I took away from uh, the fight night, which was a really great night, um, was that uh, these guys who are fighting are fighting hard. They're well conditioned. They're, 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 everything about them you can see in the head is all about tournament fighting. They did it really well. There were some great technicians. Uh, there was one fight between a couple of Paddy's, Paddy Pinto's boys. Uh, um, uh, in the semi-final, two of their guys he had three guys in the tournament, so it was inevitable that two would meet somewhere prior to the final. But uh, he had a, a, one guy named Christian, and the other way uh, was it Damien came to the seminar Friday night. Both really good fighters. Uh, and you could see how well they move together because they're training partners. So it was very exciting. Um, yep, good point, Mike. Know what you're doing. That way you don't get lost. Exactly. Like you told you said, just be clear. Is it for physical culture or is it for fighting? Make your choice and then work at it. Go 100%. I know there are dojos around, for example, that focus 100% on um, self-defense, fighting, you know, how to really fight hard. And that's 100% perfect. You know, uh, there are dojos that just focus on tournament kata for girls, boys, juniors, um, elderly people. It doesn't matter what you do. Just be clear about why you're doing it and what you're doing. Don't convince yourself. And don't try to convince other people that you know any better. Um, so I just wanted to uh, mention that book cover business. Please cover your books. Look, it's so good. You cover the book. It's pulling up there a little bit. That's because this here. I'll fix that up in a sec. But cover the books makes all the difference, keeps it. Um, we're now looking... Uh, the triple right leg kick from Christian was impressive. Yeah, um, and Christian, who went on into the final, he was finished. His leg was gone, but he really protected it very well. And I think uh, when he was fighting in the semi, um, his buddy Damien was almost looking after, want, not wanting to hurt his leg, um, I thought. But then out of the blue, Christian hit him with a, spin back kick that knocked him out cold. So there you go. He was looking after his buddy and it cost him. Um, that's life. Look, we're back to normal. Sorry about um, last week and the week before. I was The plane was laid into Melbourne. Um, it was delayed. The flight out of here was cancelled and then I had to go by Sydney and then I, my bags didn't come through. Long story, everything that can go wrong with travel went wrong. So I'm landing into into Melbourne thinking, can I do a little, um, I had my phone, I'm sitting in the seat, and I'm trying to, uh, you know, do a live stream. It just wasn't working, so it didn't work. Um, anyway. So uh, if you've got any further questions about the books, Rochelle, yours are coming. I'll send a photo of the, uh, the box ready to go as soon as I finish signing them all. That's the thing that takes time. That order of 64... I've got to sign all 64, so that literally will take a couple of days because I have to put a message in each of them. Um, I hope uh, I'm just, you know, keep my fingers crossed that uh, people enjoy the book. So I might wind it up there. Thank you, everybody, for coming along. Thank you for indulging in how to cover a book, indulging you, indulging me. Um, 
cover books. If you cover books, they'll be like that after 40 years in perfect condition. There's no reason why they can't be. Um, the book protect the cover protects them. Use non-destructive, non-adhesive plastic. Uh, and us, thanks for coming along. Um, don't ever stick um, plastic to the book or don't ever stick sticky tape to the book. Us, Gare, you might have, did you see the message, Gare, that the books arrive in uh, Sweden today or tomorrow? So the orders will go out soon. Um, hope you saw that as well. Daniel, thanks for coming. Your paperwork's on the way. I'm rewriting it, to be quite honest. That's why it's delayed. I had a package. I looked at it. I don't think it's relevant anymore. Uh, so um, uh, that'll be on its way as soon as I'm done. Thank you, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. Patreon family, thank you. If you're not a subscriber, we've, the subscriptions are going well. It's over 1,100 now. But if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Hit the little bell notifications, hit a thumbs up and leave a message. Hit me with any two of those is good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, the plastic can be found on uh, on Amazon. In Australia, I got mine at Officeworks. Um, just rolls like this. Make sure it's non-destructive. Yeah, thanks, Frederick. I'll be in touch. I've got to go to training soon, but just rolls of paper, rolls of plastic. Appreciate everybody. Thank you very much. Short session, but cover the books. Choose the training modality you want to work on and stick to it uh, and seek guidance from there. Thank you, everybody, coming along. Us. Appreciate it. See you next week with some action. <laughs>